Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now it's, um, it's about Italy business unit. And I would start from uh, the strategy of wind in Italy. I think this is the most important element because the strategy wind has been implementing over the last years has been crucial and absolutely effective in uh, outperforming the Italian market. The strategy is about positioning, and uh, the positioning of wind is made by two different elements. On one side, the clarity, transparency of uh, its uh, offering portfolio. It means an attractive offering that has been able to uh, get for wind uh, absolutely state-of-the-art commercial uh, figures over the last few years. And the second element is about the quality of service that is made by superior uh, customer excellence in customer operations mainly, but as well as at the point of sale, but customer service and uh, point of sale. And on the other side, on network, our goal is not to have the best network ever, but to have a network that is absolutely matching the most important needs of our customers, so a good network. The combination of the two is what we call uh, having a smart value for money positioning. And this has been consistent over the last, uh, over the last years. Uh, the result of this positioning is that WIN, um, in the last 20 quarters, has always outperformed the Italian market. This is extremely important. And uh, we have been able to grow in terms of value share uh, from, I remember, 14%, 13% in 2005 till the current 20.5% if we consider uh, mobile as a whole. But then if we look at the mobile consumer, the revenue share now is around 26%, moving from 16%, 17%. The, the other important aspect is that, of course, we are very focused on high margins and uh, delivering positive cash flows, not only on mobile, but as well as, well as in, uh, in the fixed arena. The fixed arena in Italy is extremely complicated because there is a very strong incumbent. And uh, in order to do that, as there is in Italy a pressure on the top line, in terms of revenues, because it's a very mature market, highly penetrated, of course, we have been putting in place very effective programs in terms of efficiency for both OPEX and CAPEX, but without touching the quality of service that, as I mentioned before, is absolutely key in the strategy. Um, the last but not the least is about the, the lean organization we have put in place in the company. I think this is one of the most important um, competitive advantages. Very lean organization, zero bureaucracy. Uh, every time we decide to do something uh, the, in terms of execution, we are able to execute in a very short time. And this has been, of course, uh, crucial in our strategy. Moving to the market. Um, the market in 2013 will, uh, will drop again. And the main, main reason behind this is uh, the mobile termination rate. Mobile termination rate is, uh, has been hitting the, the total value, the top line of operators in Italy. And uh, in 2013, there will be the last one. In July, the termination rate will uh, go to uh, 0 0.98 Eurocent. And I hope this will be the final one. Of course, this termination rate regulation is uh, driven by decisions of the European Union. And uh, we believe that 2014, the market will stabilize and we'll back to growth in 2015. So this is the most important news. We'll back to growth in 2015. If we take out the regulation's negative impact, then what we would notice is that uh, the performance in terms of revenues is exactly uh, the same, so it's flat. In the period 2012, 2015, revenues are flat, excluding mobile termination rate negative impact. Mobile voice, of course, is declining, as a matter of fact. And it's not only declining because of uh, hot competition and uh, economical downturn, but it's also declining because uh, the consumer behavior is changing. And uh, this is partially uh, being uh, offset by uh, mobile data. Mobile data is growing fast, and in particular, it's going very fast for wind, as you will see later on. Regulatory environment is uh, one of the most difficult ones. And as I already mentioned, the mobile termination rate is something that, of course, we are dealing with and we have to deal with. Um, on the fixed, the big picture is that there is a big incumbent, Telecom Italia. There are different alternative operators. 
we have a brand there, very strong one, it's uh, Infostrada. Um, and then we have also Vodafone, uh, Tele2, and FastWeb. But if we take a picture to the Italian market, what we see is that 100% of the cash flows are in the hands of the incumbent. And this is something that we consider unacceptable. That's why we are really addressing this issue, um, not only at the local level, but also at the European level, because we would like to have this LLU fee uh, to go down from the current value is approximately 9.8%. 28 sorry, uh, euros per month per line to uh, something that is more in line with 8 euros per line per month. Um, and we have a solid base case for that because recently also the Italian antitrust has stated that Telecom Italia over the last three years, particularly 2009, 10 and 11, has put in place uh, malpractices, not only from the economical point of view but also technical. And this is something that, of course, the local authority has to take into consideration. Um, about the next generation network, uh, the situation is the following. Um, there is no any chance to have different alternative fiber networks in Italy. So we are very favorable to uh, a third entity participated by both private and public uh, shareholders with parity of access for all the alternative operators. And at the same time, uh, operating in a clear and transparent governance. About the competitive situation, um, the, econo the economy of Italy is not uh, very, doesn't look so sexy, as you, as you know, as most of the Western European countries. But in any case, what we believe is that 2013, probably the situation is not going to be worse than 2012. Uh, in particular, if we consider uh, customer consumption. Of course, the GDP will decline by 1.1% versus the minus 2, 1.1% in 2012. And the unemployment rate will uh, raise again. And this is probably the most worrying uh, aspect of the Italian economy. But in any case, customer consumption is not going to change. And uh, we believe that this situation, in any case, is uh, favorable for wind, but favorable for the positioning of wind, because our Smart value for money is, of course, something that is really matching at this situation. So we still believe that thanks to this opportunity, we will be able to deliver also our results in 2013, 14 and 15. There are also other important areas for growth for wind because, for example, in the northern part of Italy and in the segment of the small medium enterprise, our value share is lower than the fair value share. So it's not only about positioning, but it's also about uh, opportunities, new opportunities for growth. As I mentioned before, if you look at the mobile market share, the mobile market share is uh, overall 20.5%. In 2009, it was 17.3%. And again, if we look at the consumer market, mobile consumer, it is approximately 26%. And our goal is to uh, get and to take the leadership in the mobile consumer market by between 2013 and 2014. Of course, our competitors are not very happy about that, but these are clear facts. So we are just simply uh, continuing our performance in the market. On the fixed, uh, Infostrada is the most important player after Telecom Italia, and that's why we are very stick to profitability and to positive cash flows. Um, and we are also doing our own homework. The homework is about of focusing on the direct access and on the most profitable channels. And our market share there is uh, uh, approximately 16.5%. Uh, Performance. Um, the, there is a big pressure on, on the top line, on the revenues. And uh, so revenues on a year-on-year -year performance are uh, slightly go down, um, as well as for the, the ABTDA. But if, again, if we take out the mobile termination rate impact, uh, the performance is absolutely stable, and in any case, much better than the one of Vodafone and Telecom Italia Mobile. As you can notice, in the third quarter of 2012, uh, despite the decline in terms of revenues, Wind's performance is much better than, than the one of the two incumbents. We expect this to be the same also in the next, in the next quarters. About the mobile subscribers, we have reached approximately 21.5 million customers. 
uh, despite the fact that in Italy the churn rate is uh, becoming a high one. But our performance in terms of net additions has been absolutely positive because we got approximately 70% of the total net additions of the market in 2012. And at the same time, if we take into consideration the mobile number portability balance for wind is extremely positive, in particular in the last six months. So the churn rate is high, but it's mainly driven by the promotional pressure existing in the mobile number portability arena. Competition there is high, and thanks to, again, the regulations that are very strict in Italy, you can change operator in 24 hours. On the, if we consider the broadband as a whole, broadband uh, fixed and broadband uh, mobile, because now the customer is changing behavior and is becoming a seamless experience. Um, now the total number of broadband customers as per the third quarter of 2012 is approximately 7 million, out of which 4.7 are uh, mobile broadband. The remaining part is about fixed, with a quite significant uh, growth over the last uh, 12 months. What are the most important achievements of 2012? I would say, uh, apart from the outperformance in terms of revenues and in terms of value share, I think that the most significant aspect is that our growth in mobile data is uh, year on year 43% and has been uh, uh, the same also in 2011. And uh, this is by far the best performance in Italy in terms of growth on mobile data. So we are really executing a lot of actions and projects that are driving wind to get this performance. On the fixed, as I already mentioned, it's important to say that we are doing our own homework. When we deal with the local authority, European authorities, not simply that we are just crying, asking for. We are doing our own homework. The target is to be in 2013 positive in terms of cash generation. And in order to get there, again, we are focusing on the ULL, which means direct access. It means that we are abandoning the WLR because it is not profitable. Just to give you an idea, in Italy, the payback period is 44 months. Doesn't make any sense. That's why we are abandoning this and leaving this to the incumbent. Um, on the other side, by focusing at the point of sale, we are practically halving the acquisition cost on fixed. So the combination of these two elements is up guaranteeing us the fact that in 2013 will be positive in terms of cash generation. The pressure at uh, top line level, of course, is um, uh, taking us to a scenario where we have to work in a very strict way in terms of efficiency for COPEX and CAPEX. On the OPEX, uh, both commercial and technical. Commercial, we are optimizing our advertising expenditure. It's something that we did in 2011. We did also in 2012, and we are going to do so in the next year. Without compromising our ability to be attractive on the most important medias to, let's say, take uh, and drive customers to the point of sale and keep uh, subscribing at the current path. At a technical level, we are uh, trying to do as much as possible in terms of site sharing, as well as for the uh, structural OPEX, we are working hard in order to contain uh, external costs, real estate costs, and all the remaining commercial costs. So there is a very hard job that we are doing there in order to get at the end of the game with uh, increasing pressure on the top line, the uh, free cash flow that is perfectly in line with the previous years. About the value agenda, um, the four pillars are the pillars that have been mentioned before. Uh, I would really move to the customer excellence one because Again, we are talking here about positioning, and uh, the consistency of this positioning has been absolutely one of the most important winning elements and successful elements. Every time we talk about customer satisfaction and superior customer experience, we look at one indicator, which is the customer satisfaction index. Um, and we are really devoted to this customer satisfaction because in 2012, we have been leaders in Italy. Uh, this has been the same story also in 2011 and in 2010. And uh, this is something that anticipates the performance in terms of value share in the Italian market. That's why we are really devoted to this. And uh, this is a 
index, which is a combination of different factors. Of course, advertising, reputation, pricing, as well as customer service and the operations and the point of sale. In terms of uh, distribution, we believe that distribution and getting a high quality customer is, is absolutely the key element in 20, 2013, as well as in the next three years. Um, about point of sales, we are moving the less effective and productive point of sales to our national distributor, just in order to be able to focus on the most important ones. We are halving the mobile number portability commissions. And uh, at the same time, we are very efficient every time we talk about incentive schemes. And incentive schemes are always 100% linked to the quality of the acquisition rather than on volumes. And that's why in this moment, if we compare all the different subscriber acquisition costs, WIN has the lowest in the market. With the best commercial performance, the lowest acquisition cost. If we look at the quality of customers and we move to the postpaid consumer, where we were absolutely uh, very low in terms of uh, value share, we've been able over the last three years to grow and to reach approximately 800k customers there. As well, in te as well as in terms of point of sales, we have reached the number of 7.7k uh, point of sales among dealers, franchising, own shops, national distributor, and large retail. Looking at the fixed, uh, this is the story about the homework that I already mentioned. So focus on the LLU, focus on inbound point of sales, no more push channels that are very expensive. On the corporate, we are really changing the strategy because there our value share is low. This is one of the most important growth opportunities we have in the market. And uh, we believe that in the Soho segment, as well as in the small medium enterprise, we can really make the difference in the next years. And we are now ready for that because you know that these segments are normally coming just uh, after the consumer one. Once you get the right reputation there, and once you get the critical mass in the consumer market, then it becomes really easier to going after the small medium enterprise and so on. So we are ready for this job. But in order to get really uh, ready, what we are doing is just to focus our point of sales that is an important asset uh, and to leverage them also for the Soho subscriptions. So our the most important offer, which is the all-inclusive now, is also ready uh, starting from November 2012 for Soho's. Uh, agencies, we are focusing on the, let me say, perfect agency in terms of qualities. And the third element is about the um, 130 industrial districts we have in Italy. So we are just focusing all our efforts in these uh, areas where uh, most of the small medium enterprises are present. If we look at the point of sale on fixed, uh, here it's important to highlight that in 2010, point of sales were able to uh, and accounted by 15% of the total fixed activations. Now they are uh, 26%. So this is exactly what we are doing on fixed and we will do also for the Soho segment. The value proposition is uh, based on the all-inclusive concept. Uh, as you know, we have two important brands. One is, one is Win for, for mobile and the other one is Infostrata for the fixed. But over the last two years, we have been able to create one convergent brand. This convergent brand is a product brand. It's all-inclusive. We introduced for the first time the all-inclusive concept in 2009. Then we have been copied and matched by competition by Vodafone and Telecom and Channel Mobile. Sometimes we should probably ask for some royalties every time we do our products in Italy and we launch our commercial canvas. But in any case, it's important to say that the all-inclusive now is present not only in the prepaid market, but also in the postpaid consumer, as well as in the mobile and fixed, consumer and business. Uh, so it's really the platform that we have put in place just to play in advance from all the other competitors and to really get the opportunities that are, of course, uh, in front of us every time we talk about data. Because with the all-inclusive concept, we are able to manage the arbitration that the customer tends to do every time you know, the customer works with voice, SMS, and the internet. 
So it's a future-proof uh, offer that now in this moment is becoming the flagship and uh, probably the most wanted offer uh, for our customer base and also for the retail market. As you can notice now in this moment, we have approximately 2 million all-inclusive customers. And if we look at the Infostrada, so the LLU, approximately 75% of the Infostrada customers are dual play, so all-inclusive customers. In terms of data, again, the growth has been impressive, 41%, 43% in 2012 in the first nine months. It was above 40% or so in the previous periods. And um, this, this has happened because of, let's say, three main reasons. The first reason is that we have covered 94% of the population with a high-speed mobile network. The second reason is that we are really committed in order to guarantee the right quality in terms of capacity. And uh, this is not uh, only thinking of the maximum speed, but it is more about the minimum guarantee speed. Now we know perfectly the customers really need something that is in the area of 1.52 megabit as average throughput. And we are really working in order to give this with the right IP by calling and all the investments needed in order to guarantee the right capacity. Because internet mobile in Italy is really booming. Um, the third element is that we are working in order to have the right segmentation for the offering. And as Anton mentioned in Russia, it's exactly the same in Italy. The focus is on small screens, and uh, the focus is also on the right agreements and partnerships with the vendors, in particular Samsung, that is really doing very well in our point of sales. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of innovative areas that we are looking closely. Uh, just to mention some of them, in terms of uh, mobile payment, it's not only about buying digital content, but it's also about ticketing. Ticketing now is booming. And we recently, we received the authorization from the local authorities to buy with the top up of the prepaid ticketing uh, for trans local transportation in Italy. So this is an important area where we can grow consistently. Um, the other area is that we recently introduced a new organization in WIND. This organization is called uh, Win Digital and has the aim to address the digital native generations that want to deal with wind uh, through the online channels. They are customers, and let's say it's a big chunk of customers, that are um, in the wave of not necessarily going to the point of sale, the physical one, but just in order to deal with the company using all the different online channels with the right integration between social networks and the web uh, and the web channels. Um, also, if we talk about customer service, it's important to, to say that recently we have reached one million downloads of the MyWind application, application for smartphones. And this is extremely important because it's one of the most effective steps in helping the customer service people to be more efficient as well as more effective in the next, in the next period. Operational excellence, this is about um, OPEX. We have uh, recently signed an important agreement with uh, unions, institutions, and uh, with all the wind employees on board. This is the project called Network Transformation Project. Um, we have been able to reach approximately 40, 45 million euros in terms of uh, per annum savings, in terms of cost of labor. And uh, thanks to a new organization on the network, we'll be able also to insource some activities, and this will help us in reducing external costs. As I already mentioned, advertising expenditure is being optimized, as well as we are really looking at uh, real estate and power consumption. For this purpose, we also have introduced another organization that is called Real Estate and is looking at these important costs that are becoming extremely demanding, in particular, uh, power consumption. F about the network, is, um, here it is more about site sharing. Um, we have uh, grown a lot in terms of uh, uh, sites shared, uh, approximately 40%, 40 40%. Uh, year on year. Now there are approximately 2,100 uh, sites uh, shared. 
but at the same time, uh, we are trying to educate the market for a more aggressive side sharing. So we believe that this, uh, there is enough room in Italy to have joint development of LT networks, for example. And um, there is, let's say, uh, other opportunities that we can explore. Uh, about the network, it's also important to mention that we have run a free of charge modernization from the 2G network to the 3G network. Again, we are optimizing the maintenance area and we are consolidating the uh, build the network with only one vendor in order to be more effective uh, for the next, uh, in the next three years. Summing up everything, I think that the story of wind is, is the following. The, the company has been able to outperform its peers. Uh, and at the same time, thanks to all the actions that I've already described, has been able to deliver a significant and very interesting and attractive uh, cash flow in the period between 20, 2008 and 2012. Uh, wind has been able to deliver above 1.1 billion euros of cash flows. Uh, we have the opportunity to keep doing and keep outperforming the market thanks to the new opportunities we have. Uh, it's important to say that we have the small medium enterprise in the northern part of Italy where we can do much better in the next years. And we can really leverage the experience we have reached in terms of uh, mobile data. And we can really keep uh, outperforming also in this area uh, in the Italian market. Of course, it's a matter of execution. It's a matter of organization. And we believe that if we are able to keep the organization committed and uh, really focused on uh, cash generation, this is going to be uh, the reality for the next three years. Thanks very much. Thank you, Maximo. We have time for a few questions now. Can you raise your hand if you want to ask a question? Um, so how critical is it for you to get the, um, the right regulations on ULL? It's, it's, let me say it's critical, but um, because on the, on the other side we have uh, a big incumbent that has a different uh, agenda. But we really believe that uh, we have a solid base case. Again, the antitrust decision, recent decision is favorable to wind. The, all the evidences we have collected are extremely, extremely uh, effective in this direction. So it's difficult, but it's absolutely not impossible. Wait a second. If the network spin out is going to be implemented, do, do you see that as a positive or a negative for wind? I see this as a positive uh, decision for, for the reason that there will be one network uh, with parity of access for all the different alternative operators. The important thing is that there is a very clear governance. Uh, this clear governance can be guaranteed by the public entity or a private company with public objectives, like the Casa Depositio Presidente in Italy. And again, all the strategic decisions about the development of the network, which is fiber to the home, fiber to the cabinet, is something that has to be uh, decided, and this decision has to be taken uh, by this governance. But I see this as a very positive scenario. Next question. Next. Herf. Happy Drew from HSBC. Uh, first question is uh, on Italy with this tough, you know, telecoms market you just uh, mentioned to us. I mean, do, do you see, firstly, room for uh, further sharing, not only in sites, but also on the networks? And do you think the operators are ready for it, or do you think it's still too soon? Or could there be any constraint, you know, uh, you see that may inhibit that? You mean uh, sites sharing, or you mean well, site sharing. network sharing? Yeah, I'm more talking about the equipment sharing itself, not only the sites, but for, for the equi further. I believe that for the equipment sharing is, it's of course, a theoretical scenario, but I really believe that we should probably talk about the new network development, so the LT. There is room for this. And do you think other operators, I mean, it, it looks like you, I mean, you are saying for you it, it's something which you would be relatively happy to do? I mean, do, do you see from the, your competitors uh, some 
It's an increasing interest. Uh, they are a little bit shy on that, but I believe this is something that we can <laughs> work out. <laughs> and, and, and also, do, do you believe that uh, uh, if, if the market remains tough for longer, uh, do you think uh, we might potentially see some consolidations, depending on what happened also on the network spin out, you know, outcome, but uh, in the fixed line broadband in Italy, do you think there is room for consolidation there? For the fixed broadband, uh, I think that the only clear scenario is the one that we were discussing before, is the separation of the network of Telecom Italia and then a new entity that could manage both copper and fiber network. In terms of consolidation, of course, there is always an opportunity, but in this moment of the economic downturn, it's difficult to take decisions like this. All right, thank you. And we have the next question. There in the back. Thanks, Gavin McKeown from Pioneer. I'm curious, with the- Sorry, who's, okay, thanks. With such a challenging economic environment as you point out at the start, and an incumbent that doesn't really act rationally for an incumbent trying to match your pricing policies with a much higher cost base. Why were you so comfortable launching a pretty aggressive offering during the summer to, what, to try and send a signal back to TI or? The, is, every, time, every time we talk about pricing in Italy, it's always a tricky thing. The, one evidence and one fact is that Wynn has been always very consistent with this strategy. Again, it's a smart value for money. But again, it doesn't mean only uh, cheap offering, but it means also very transparent and innovative. Just if we talk about the all-inclusive, it's very innovative. What has happened recently is that the two incumbents, in particular one, uh, Telecom Italia, has decided to match uh, most of our offers sometimes being even more aggressive. Uh, but this is less their strategy, it's not our strategy. Uh, the, important, the important element in our strategy is to be, again, very attractive in terms of offering and superior customer experience in terms of service. And this has been paying off. We believe that consistency is absolutely more important rather than ups and downs in the pricing strategy. Is that on a... a a dangerous strategy if they then try and match you again and it becomes a race to the bottom? But generally, if we, if we talk about what, what is, if your question is, what do you expect, in particular in 2013, 2014? What I believe is that um, competition in pricing has been extremely demanding in Italy. I don't see 2013 to be more aggressive than 2012. I believe that uh, the fact that in 2013 July, the termination rate will drop to uh, 0 0.98. This will determine something totally different because the strategy in terms of pricing will disappear a little bit. It's just a matter of bundles. It's just a matter of all-inclusive bundles almost everywhere. And there is not going to be any more distinction between off-net and on-net. This will change a little bit the market and probably will determine a situation where aggressiveness in terms of pricing will be a little bit over. 